Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So I'm making another video in my series about what sound engineers need to know about acoustics. This is the series where I talk about the more controversial, sometimes underappreciated facts about acoustic treatment that you need to know to make the treatment process a success and get your rooms to translate properly. This is fact number two, and that is that you can't fix the bass once the room is done, all right? You can't fix the bass after the fact once you've already set up your room. This is something that you have to learn. It's something that we all have to learn, usually the hard way, and that's what I wanna talk about in this video. But first, my plant. I've seen the comments. Yeah, it's looking a bit miserable, but it's here to stay. It's part of the gang. I'm working on it. I'm giving it some treatment. It got infected with some weird bug, but uh, hopefully it'll recover. And yeah, it's here to stay. It's part of the gang. So the second thing, if you're in the process of treating your home studio, I wanna help you out with my home studio treatment framework. This is a top level perspective, my five steps to treating a room and getting it to translate. It's basically the process that I teach my students, but also the process that I go through, the main steps that I follow in order to know what I need to focus on at each step and what to ignore. So it's all in there, speaker positioning, listening position, treatment, porous absorption, resonance absorption, subwoofers, measurements, speaker decoupling. And it's all laid out in a process that you can follow one step at a, step at a time so you really know what to focus on and what to get out of each of these steps in the process of treating your home studio. So if you're wondering what it is you need to focus on next, or maybe you are just starting off with a new room and you wanna go about it the smart way, then make sure you download my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description. It's completely free and it'll teach you what you need to know to make this process a success. All right, getting back to fact number two, that you can't fix the base once the room is done. What do I mean by that? Well, if you want to control the low end, if you want to get a balanced low end in your studio, you really need to plan for it, you need to work for it right from the start. And that's because getting a good low end really involves a multitude of steps that all focus on different aspects of the problem. So we're talking about room geometry, then placing your listening position and placing your speakers treatment, both with porous absorption, potentially resonance absorption, and then EQ, right? So there is a multitude of these steps that all focus on kind of adjusting different aspects of the low end problem. And if you want to get the low end right, you need to deal with all of them. So if you're wondering which one's the most important, well, they all are. That's kind of the point that I'm trying to make, right? So the, the room geometry, the room size and geometry really is kind of like the source material when you're mixing. It dictates what the, or how far you can take the, the process, how good the end result can potentially be if you go through all the other steps properly. But it's kind of like the source material. Obviously, in many cases, we're stuck with the room that we have, so it's not something that we can really do anything about, but it is one of the many steps that control, that dictate how good your low end is gonna be. Then second, the listening position. This is about finding your low end sweet spot, and you can kind of think of this like setting the initial tonal balance of your low end. Same with speaker positioning, although the setting of the listening position has a much greater impact in this, uh, when we're talking about this concept of tonal uh, balance in your low end. Then we come to treatment, and treatment is just about basically improving what is already there, right? So the, the groundwork that you've set through room geometry, sort of, and listener and speaker positioning, is what we work on to improve with the treatment. As we start removing issues that the room kind of imposes on the sound from your speakers, as we start removing those issues through treatment, we get closer and closer to just the plain direct sound from the speakers. And so we get closer to what we initially set out through the speaker and listening position 
positioning, <laughs> if you will, right? And then speaker equalization is kind of like the band-aid that you slap on right at the end to pick up the slack to sort of fix any of the issues that you weren't able to get right with all the other steps that came before it. But it only focuses on tonality, only on frequency. It doesn't affect the time response of the room. So the problem is that if you get started with treatment and you just decide to stick to like two inch, five centimeter panels that you put on the, vo on the walls to damp the reverb a bit, kind of tame some of the reflections, then usually what happens is you work with that and a year later you realize the bass is really messed up and I really need to do something about this. But now you've already got kind of tons, tons of furniture in the room. Maybe you didn't pay attention to finding your room's low end sweet spot and placing your listening position deliberately so your desk and speakers are in the wrong place. And it's really hard to now do something about this. Unfortunately, now the only solution you have is to start again from scratch, right? Because obviously, yeah, you can now just slap on some EQ in the form of a speaker equalization. But like I said, it's a band-aid and it will only get you so far. And most importantly, you got to remember that it only focuses on frequency and it doesn't actually help with uh, the time aspect, so low-end resonances that ring over time, the problem of ringing in the room will still be there even if you equalize your system. Or even if you really decide to dive into bass traps at that point, point and place quite a few bass traps in the room, you got to remember it only improves what is already there. So if your low-end balance is off, because once again, you didn't focus on finding your low end sweet spot and placing your listening position there, then all that bass trapping can again only take you so far because your initial balance was off. So if you think that you can just ignore the low end at first and then deal with that problem later, unfortunately, you're setting yourself up for failure. You really need to focus and plan for the low end right from the beginning all the way through the treatment process. Of course, unfortunately, it's kind of inevitable that we all go through making this mistake at first because we got to learn that it is literally, this is literally the case, that once you've kind of locked yourself into a certain geometry and arrangement of your desk and speakers in your room and a certain room layout with treatment and furniture, once you're kind of locked into that, there's not really that much you can do to fix the low end. If you want to get it right, you need to start from scratch and plan for it right from the start. And if you've recently gone through this realization and have had this experience, please let me know in the comments below what your experience has been. Maybe you think otherwise. Maybe you disagree with what I'm saying. Also let me know about that. And in the bigger context of the series, also let me know what you have learned about the process of treating your room that has been absolutely crucial to making it a success, something that you maybe would have liked to have known before. Also, let me know about that in the comments. All right, that's it. That's my fact number two about what sound engineers need to know about acoustics. As always, with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.